it open. Looks like my head is can't open. Hi, hi. Good afternoon, everybody. Tom Stewart here. Um, smart business moves, five o'clock Eastern time. Got uh, Liz Trotter with us. Hey, Liz. Hey, y'all. And we got a really special guest today, uh, Paul August. Uh, Paul is uh, has a cleaning business in New Hampshire. Um, I've met Paul a couple of times at, at convention, but uh, kind of new to our group here. He's one of the few people that we've actually had on this that's uh, never been to foundations or, or yet. I didn't realize <laughs> that, actually, Tom. We yeah. might have to fix that. We might have to fix that. <laughs> Sorry, Paul. <laughs> I had to go and hook you up with him, right? <laughs> no worries. That's okay. It'll last an hour. Don't worry about it. It'll go fast. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm trying to pull us up. Why is why am I not being able to find our Facebook Live today? That's uh, a question. Do you have anybody on comments yet? No. No, you know, we got we got a few people uh, watching, but no comments yet. Okay, I wonder what I'm doing wrong here. There, there. there we go. We we all know operator error if it's you know. Okay. <laughs> requires I just something just to see. All if right, oh, Marlo's here. Okay, yay! I see. Yeah. I see. Where's Marlo? Marlo? Hey, do you know Marlo, Paul? Yes, it's her birthday. Oh, Marlo, it's your birthday? Happy yeah, birthday. Happy birthday, Marlo. Well, this is a good thing to be doing for your birthday. Yay. Well, this is an awesome thing to be doing for your birthday. What else could we, What else would you want to do? Oh, Leslie's here too. Hey, Leslie. It's not really her birthday. It's just something that happened back in Savannah. Her birthday in August. August, uh, I forget what. Oh. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> so, did you guys get her like um, make her get a uh, birthday um, celebration at a restaurant or something? Exactly what happened. I wasn't there for it, but I heard all about it. So the whole time, I just kept on saying "Happy Birthday," and everyone thought it was her birthday. Did she look like <laughs> a, a cake and they came out and sang for? Her? There's a picture. There's a picture. I'm gonna post it in the group afterwards. I have this picture. Okay, I love it. <laughs> Every day is my birthday. Yeah. yeah. Uh, thank, thank goodness uh, every day is not my birthday. I'm, I'm not thinking I could handle that. Oh, you must know Denise, huh? She sounds really excited that you're here. What? Paul August. Yeah. Really? Uh, Tara, too. Oh, hey, Paul. See, were you guys not paying attention? You didn't know she was going to be here? Say again, Paul? No, Denise sent me an ice cream maker. So I had to come outside because I think the whole neighborhood is at my house making ice cream right now. Homemade ice cream. Oh, <laughs> straight up. Ice cream. Cool. Oh, I so love like homemade ice cream. Are you making vanilla? The soul. I don't know what making. I just ran outside because it was too loud. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Hey, Denise, that was that was very cool that you sent him that. Oh, she thinks she can. Can you see the comments, Paul? If I go on to uh, the other screen, but it's a little delayed. If I go on Facebook, it's uh, there. Yeah. Oh, no, I That's okay. Whoa. She wants me to send you her best. Denise, oh. I sent Paul my best. Oh, I can see a live comment. Oh, there it is. Right there. You see it? Okay, yeah. you can comment in there, which Perfect. is kind of a bummer. I always want to comment, but we can't. Oh, okay. So, well, it looks like a lot of you guys know Paul. Yay. Uh, well, I'm going to have him. For the people that don't know him, I'm going to have you, Paul, go ahead and tell us a little bit about who you are, how long you've been in business, what you do. You know, give us a little rundown. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, my name is Paul August. Um, and I started actually, if I backtrack, my first cleaning company was when I was 18 years old. I was, uh, yeah, I was working for this, uh, nonprofit organization and I got laid off me and a whole bunch of teachers. And for the longest time during that point, I thought I was going to be a teacher. Well, they laid me off during field day and I had to go home. I had like the native American fake feathers, the war paint and everything. And I had to walk home three miles. And oh. I, my uh, my wife, uh, and the whole time, I'm like, what the heck am I gonna do while war paint streaming down my face and whatnot? <laughs> so I had two hundred dollars in my bank account, and I figured, okay, well, I took marketing and uh, business in school in a trade school I was at, so let's make this work for us. So my wife and I, she was my girlfriend then, we went to uh, Family Dollar. And just load it up on like two hundred dollars worth of cleaning products, and That's a lot. <laughs> on Craigslist. 
our first uh, our first cleaning job, guess how much we charged? Forty dollars. Thirty dollars for two people for three hours. Wow. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> I just didn't value my time. But anyways, uh, that business didn't end up working out for obvious reasons. <laughs> Uh, I can't believe they're still doing it. <laughs> <laughs> you charge Say again? You charge more than that now. Exactly, exactly. We knew something was there. Uh, it's a, a barrier of entry in this industry is pretty low. Um, so it's easier to get into. So when I was deployed, we started replanning, restructuring, and uh, came back and we opened up our home plus cleaning. And uh, that was back in 2015 we were open officially. Nice. All right. So, uh, so tell us about how, how, how big of an area do you have? How many employees do you have? Tell us a little bit about your, cause you're in New Hampshire. I mean, you can pretty much clean the whole state and only have what, 25 customers or something. Actually our business is in Massachusetts. So oh, I live I was, oh, yeah, okay. in New Hampshire and my business is in Mass. We do some Southern New Hampshire, but not a lot just cause Massachusetts tends to be, I guess, deeper pockets for lack of a better term. I, I, they, people are, are not afraid to spend on what they need there versus New Hampshire. And it's weird because the border is right there, right? You think it'd be yeah. a little bit But so we service, um, we service like the Boston area. And what I didn't know when I started was that a lot of cleaning business owners don't have such a wide area. We were just saying yes to anyone in like our county <laughs> and just like driving. It, it, it was ridiculous. And it's still it's still that big. So now we have like two locations. We have our Tingsboro location uh, and then we have a Woburn location, but that's basically like a, a storage unit that we use like a re resupply station kind yeah. of thing. Um, right now we only have eight team members. We went from having 12 and we kind of scaled down obviously with COVID and everything. Yeah. We're getting back to our, our, our norm. I actually think we're going to get back to better than what we were. Um, and I actually think we might still be able to hit some numbers this year. But uh, nice. yeah, keep our fingers crossed and hope uh, it stays going good, you know? Yeah, well, that that's actually why I wanted to talk to you. But first, before I talk about that, I got to real quick say, so Marlo says in 1986, she charged $20 for a team of two and included dishwashing. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Aren't you feeling a little better? Yeah, I guess we both dollars was worth a lot more than it is today. Not saying you're old, Marla. That's I mean you wouldn't be alive in 46. But I you have all these birthdays. What, what happens? <laughs> well, you have so many birthdays, yeah. You get old faster that way. <laughs> <laughs> I really wish I could remember my old numbers, but I, I can't. I, I, I feel really happy when I can remember what I was doing last year. It's, you know, it's a struggle sometimes. Well, so one of the things that I really wanted to talk about, Paul, is what are you doing? What are your strategies? How are you how are you growing out of this? Um, um, because you do have this marketing thing going on. How are you making it um, work for you? Yeah, so immediately. Oh, I was a little echoey. I thought you were saying something. Immediately when this happened, I got on, I literally, I got my whiteboard and I said, all right, what's the worst case scenario? What's the minimum number that we can go to? And how does that look, how does that look for our team members? How does it look for us? And uh, we started looking at it. Hold on. Hold on. You're really, um, I feel it. Yeah, I'm not sure if it's you. Maybe if we mute, it'll be better. Let's mute. Liz, you mute, I mute. Let's see what happens. How's that? Is it still echoey? All right, awesome. So, yeah, we went down to, we, we figured, okay, what's the worst case scenario? What's the worst thing that can happen? And how do we kind of mitigate that? And thankfully, we weren't at that low um, worst case scenario. I think had we been a little smaller, um, we would have felt the impact a little bit more than uh, we did. Um, and I, I automatically, I started thinking, okay, do we keep marketing? How does that go? So I was still running my Google ads. I was still running everything because my competitors weren't. So I figured if we're losing customers, we can get them back on this end. And it just was, it was like call after call after call. And it just started, it was like watching an airplane just go down in flames for a little bit. And I got, I got nervous. I, I, I'll tell you, I got really, really nervous. Like everyone did. And um, as a pilot, that's something that you don't want to think about. 
<laughs> not at all. Not at all. Um, so we started really, really focusing on SEO. And SEO is a long-term strategy. So we're like, okay, if we're not going to spend money right now on Google, why the heck wouldn't we really optimize our SEO? So I started restructuring my website. Um, I do a lot of work for other people's websites, but I never really care about mine as much. Uh, so I started re uh, going through there. We took every service location that we service and turned it into its own page and uh, put videos everywhere, really getting content heavy and uh, just kind of diving into that because it, it really took no, no money. Uh, it didn't take as much money for us to do it. And I know SEO can be expensive, but the things that I knew, I, I put into practice and everything. And we ended up getting a full-time SEO person on our marketing team. So that kind of helped out a lot. Um, actually, the other day. But you were the one doing it. So it was a, a lot of less expensive. It was a mix. It was a, mix. So yeah. a lot of content. I wasn't writing my own content. And um, some of the things I was doing on the back end, the backlink, um, building backlinks and whatnot. But there's so much. I always tell everyone, like, there's no real, I don't think there's a real SEO expert, you know, because these websites, they change things all the time. So today, you know what the heck you're doing. And tomorrow, it makes no sense because you're being penalized for the same thing you were doing before. All right. So uh, I try to get as much, uh, I try to get as many people that know what they're doing and see what makes sense. So the whole COVID things, you know, happened over the last several months. I know there's a thought out there that SEO is kind of a long-term play. You know, most SEO experts, if you talk to about, you know, consultants will tell you, yeah, it'll take a year or so before you'll actually start seeing benefits. Have you been able to move the needle any over the last few months? Yes. I'll say yes, because um, it's not something that we, we weren't, uh, doing any SEO and we just started one day doing SEO. So there there was that backlink building, for example, on the um, that's been happening for years. Um, but I never went as aggressive as I did. But the other day I got a message from one of our team members. And I actually posted it on my Facebook page and she goes, hey, can you turn off the marketing? I'm like, that's not marketing. She's like, <laughs> I'm like, that's all SEO. And yeah. all, we're not always the number one for everything. But just that changing, adding every single location we service as its own page has shown to uh, make a difference. So okay, I can only make that, that strategy. So you build a city page for every location that you're doing. I guess you have to put a fair amount of local content with each city there in order to make that work. Yes, you do. You do. Um, so right now, the way we originally did it was we just changed the location. For example, if we were doing Boston, Massachusetts, we would change Boston, Massachusetts, um, which is like the city name. The, the wording would be exactly the same. That's what we did to get it out there immediately. Now that we got time and we already published that, we're going back and putting new content on each page. It's individual content. And that's where it takes time because, you know, you can either do it yourself and come up with the content or you can outsource it and have somebody write it for you. That's where it's going to take time and money. So, Paul, one of the things you said you were doing is a lot of videos and stuff. Can you, yeah. like, tell us a little bit about what kind of videos are you putting out there? Are you creating them, somebody else doing them for you? Like, talk to us about video. Yeah, it's a little bit of both. Um, I, um, they ask, you answer, Marcus Sheridan. Mm-hmm. It's familiar the book. I mean, that book is gold when it comes to marketing. Li yeah, literally. It's amazing. And I can't stress it to people. I tell people, okay. Remember years ago when you told a business owner, hey, get a website, and they would tell you, oh, I'm on the yellow pages. I don't need a <laughs> website. Now everybody has a website, right? And it's the same thing. Video is like, hey, get a video. Oh, I don't need a video. I have a website. Video is one of those things that you are going to need. Everyone is going to need. So we just got out there, and I, my videos on my website, you guys could check it out, homeplusclean.com. They're not the best. But we needed to get something out there to answer the questions that were being asked. Now, once we get it out there, we can go back and make it funny and come up with some creative ways. But I just needed something there. And I needed Google to see that. So we created a video for every service we offer. And so there's a video for that. I created um, a little bio video introducing myself. Uh, I created a hiring video as well. I actually did that the other day. Wasn't the best. I'm like, oh, let me get this out there um, just so we can get people to see see when they're applying, hey, 
here's who we are, and this is our team. They're fun. We want you to be part of that because like attracts like. Well, you know, this is Gary Vee's strategy, too, So from long before, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, before Marcus came along, Gary was pushing this hard. But then Marcus came around with the, just that little bit of a twist yeah. that has really made a big difference. I think a lot of people in our industry are, are huge fans, right, of Marcus Sheridan. He's been at a lot of our events. So um, I'm well, hoping that... The the say again? He was uh, he was at um, Artsy in November. Yeah, I was at Artsy. Mm -hmm. He was at was it Phoenix Time or Tucson? Where were we? Tucson. Uh, or Tucson. Executive Leadership Conference. That was that's probably a couple of years ago. That long ago, he was also at Quality Driven, I think. Or uh, uh, service. I don't think he was there. I think oh, service autopilot. I think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Sarah is on here. She's on a different um, website. I think she's on Modern Cleaning. Yeah, she's my long lost son. <laughs> I, I can't um, connect with her because I'm on Clean Business today. I think she's on uh, Modern Cleaning, so we can't respond. Um, um, but uh, the, the videos, I, I love this idea of the videos. I think Tom's probably going to pull up your website and show a couple. Uh, so one of the things you said that I think is super important, Paul, is they don't have to be perfect. They just have to be out there. Exactly. Done is better than perfect. Get it out there, you know, execute on something. And, yeah. I think a lot of people have this idea, though, that, yeah, done is better than perfect, but not when it comes to video. Because people have that idea on everything, though. Done is better than perfect until it comes to this or that or this or that. Mm -hmm. uh, and I remember coming back from deployment, I almost, I spent the entire end of my deployment just because everything was getting a little crazy. Um, so we couldn't go out and do things anymore. But I spent the entire end of my deployment planning uh, this business. And I got back and I almost didn't execute on it because I wanted to have it perfect. I had to have this and I had to have that. And uh, one of my, uh, my roommates, he's like, hey, what's going on with this? He's like, I forget what he said. He was a big reader as well. I forget what he said. He quoted a book and he's just like, just go there, do it. And you're going to learn it as you go along. You know, and if you go with my videos, I don't have the best editing skills, but it, I just went and took my Mac and started doing it. Then I got a better program and just started playing around with it. And it all fell together. Well, what, what program are you using right now, Paul? I wish I remembered the name. <laughs> it, it's on my desktop in the office. It's like movie something. I'll, I'll share it afterwards. Do you but use I, a Mac or PC? I'm sorry? You use a Mac or yeah. PC? Well, I use a Mac at home. The other program is for PC and Mac, but I purchased the, the PC version because I was too cheap to put a P, uh, Mac in my office. I <laughs> need that because all of the ones that we hear about all the time are for Macs. So oh. I need one that's for PC. I think I paid... Forty-nine or fifty dollars, and it's way better than iMovies, and it's for life. No monthly, oh. one-time fee. Oh, yeah, we need that. Yeah, okay. we definitely need that, or at least I need that. Yeah. All right, so are we going to play a video here, real quick, Tom? Yeah, can I come and play this? Yeah, let's roll. I really trust the people you're into my home. Who are they? How do I know they're not criminals and they got to steal everything from my house? How you doing, guys? My name is Paul Loggins, and that is a very good question. So I'm a former National Police Department officer, and I'm still a certified police officer in the state of New Hampshire. So why did I tell you all my credentials beforehand? Well, my primary role at Homeless Cleaning is to oversee all of the HR. I oversee the recruiting and the background checks in accordance with state and local law, and I also do the character references for all of our team members that come on board. When someone applies to work with Homeless Cleaning, we do an intensive background investigation. We want to make sure that the person that we're sending into your home is trustworthy. A lot of the time with new applicants, the references that they provide with us are friends, family members, and supervisors that they like. So what we do is we still contact those people and just ask for a character reference. But we take it a step further. We actually call their employers as well, that actual job that they left for whatever reason, and we just ask them simple questions. And one of the key questions we ask them is, if you had to hire this person again, would you hire this person? We want to make sure that the person we're sending to your home is 100% trustworthy. 
in all the years that we've been in business, we have never had any issue. So if you're worried about who's going to your home, you don't have to worry about it. We're not just pulling people up the street and sending them to your home or going on Craigslist and just finding anyone to just work with us. We only hire the top of the top and work with the best of the best. And I think this shows throughout our company. All right, so I got a little bit of a problem. So that video right there, like on a scale of one to 10, how would you rank that? 10 is high, one is low. Oh, I can't hear you. Oops. I'm, um, you muted you. All right. You're good now, Paul. I'd give that video a seven, eight, because that video was definitely better than when I first started. Okay, good. Because I thought this is you're trying to say that this is not a good video. I'm like, come on. I, you know how I got better at editing. So, um, Amar uh, from ZenMade, mm -hmm. uh, Amar and Fran uh, did this 100 day video challenge, which I only got to like 30 or 40 something days. And literally, that's when I started editing. This was in December. And, oh, wow. Uh, so, I just every single day, I had to edit a video. And by day 30, I can edit a video very well. Yeah, no kidding. So if you allocate an hour a day, that, that's aggressive. It was probably not even an hour a day to try to do something. You can get better at it. Uh, I also got a green screen kit from Amazon.com. It cost me $80. Green screen, light, everything. $80. Yeah. And that's shot from an iPhone. That one was from an iPhone 6. Wow, really? Now, iPhone 11, I do my videos through there, and it comes out really well. You don't, you don't need much. A lot of people think you need this whole setup. You don't need much to make something look um, really presentable. Yeah, that looks really good. Are you using the mic? It's just like native on the phone? So for the iPhone 11, you don't even need the, the mic. Uh, but for those ones, I had the mic because my iPhone 6 didn't have a very good uh, mic. But this one, I just used the mic from there. As long as you got a quiet space, it's incredible what you can do with something that's just in your pocket. Like this is just, it's not even a phone anymore. I don't want to call it that. This is like, this is a whole tool. Like yeah. I I'll never pick up my, uh, my laptop to do any work. I mean, I just use this. So. Yeah, it, that was really looks good, Paul. But I mean, you also have a very good, crisp, clean look that, you know, not, not all of us have that look. So, and you present well, you know, just, you're really believable. Not everybody looks that comfortable. Do you think that it's still okay to have somebody that doesn't look comfortable or should they hire somebody that looks better? You know, it, it's, it's a double-edged sword because I think um, we all think that we can, we're, we're not fit to do this. I'll tell you what one of my uh, barriers for actually doing video was, and this is, I mean, I, I thought it would be, and it's funny because I live in the North, so you don't have that as, as prevalent, but I'm like, you know, do I really want my customers to see my face? What if they don't like black people? That was literally my thought. And I just did it. You know, everyone has this thing, like whether it's true or not, you know, like it's just this, yeah. this doubt about what they can and can't do. Just go Actually, on. that's a really good point. I yeah. love that. Yeah, that's a really great point. I wouldn't have thought of that, but yeah, you got to Everybody's got that thing that's bugging them, right? Like me, I, I move my hands too much. People are going to think I'm flighty and, you know, ah, but that's no different. You know, people are going to think what they're going to think. So, okay, I, I get that. Yeah. Uh, if, if the objective is to boost SEO, I mean, you don't want anything that's going to hurt you, but from an SEO standpoint, if that video is a eight or a five, you're going to get the same SEO value, right? You know what? That's that's a good question. In terms of the quality of the video, you mean? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, I mean, you're talented and you speak well with confidence. I mean, that was an awesome video. But even if you aren't that good you're still going to get a lot of SEO value on shooting a five video as opposed to an eight, right? I can't speak to like what Google's actually doing in terms of like listening to these videos. Uh, I don't know how the algorithm works, but they want to see stuff like that. 
Like Google <laughs> loves content. These search engines love content. The more, the better. Like back in the days, you can get away with um, uh, putting 500 words on a page like, or 1,000 words on a page. Now they want 2,500. I mean, I ran a analysis on my uh, website just the other day, and I'm like, man, I got to put more content up. It's not enough. You're not writing enough. Yeah, they want uh, epic, epic pages, stories, a lot of stuff. And let me let me put the video this way. You know, like you said, done is better than perfect. You know, if you got a choice between, you know, maybe I'm only capable of doing like I don't know, scale of one to ten, a five, but a five is better than no video at all, right? But so it, absolutely, I absolutely. Let me show you something. Actually, go to um, About Us. Okay. I'm going to give you guys a golden nugget here. Go okay. to Video Gallery. Promise of Excellence? Nope, a Video Gallery. Oh. So these are my frequently asked questions answered in video format. Now, click on one of Catherine's videos. Like one How of those easy videos. is that? Press play. That's not me. No. And you can get your team members involved in this. We get some great questions from our customers. Hi, my name is Catherine, and I'm a client concierge at Home Plus Cleaning. And I wanted to take a moment and answer some of the most common ones. Question Do you always send the same house cleaners? We believe that it's very important to always send the same team member to clean your home. And we do everything in our control to make this possible. When you choose our cleaning service, we assign you a primary and a secondary cleaner. If your primary team member is absent, you can expect to see your secondary team member. All of our residential housekeepers undergo extensive training to ensure that the quality of our work is always consistent. And being law enforcement owned, we take the security of your home seriously and would never send an unscreened person to your home. Contact us to request a free estimate. That's for me. No, yeah. That's, that's yeah. You can get, like, it doesn't have to necessarily be you. And in reality, should all the videos be me? No, it shouldn't be me because if I ever have plans to sell the company down the road uh, and the company's built around me, somebody's going to ask me to do a, a stay on for X amount of years, make sure I hit profit. You no, know, uh, I'm sorry, the sun is in here. I got to move you. Make sure I hit certain uh, earnings before they can uh, see that the system is viable, the business is worth it. Everything can't be built around the owner. So get your team members involved. Yeah. I have a video. One of our girls, Tiffany, she's petrified of videos. If you go to our contacts and uh, join, join us page, it's a hiring uh, video. She's petrified of videos. And when I recorded her one time, she was like shaking. But she speaks. She did it. Like, just get everybody involved in it. And uh, is it this gal right here? Yeah, that's Tiffany. So she works for you. Your yeah. your your client concierge. Does she, she doesn't work? work for me? She doesn't work for me. She's she, a spokesperson. I'm sorry. She's a spokesperson. So you just found her like on Fiverr or something? Exactly. Oh. Yeah. Like she's just a, why was she so afraid if that's what she does? No, this girl works for me. Tiffany works for me. Uh oh, okay. Right. This one right yeah, here. Right. The, the yeah. lady at the photo gallery was. was oh, uh, no wonder. I'm like, dang, she's really good too. Yeah. So, How well does she clean? I'm sorry? How well does she clean? <laughs> I don't know. Well, I'm going to find I want to see Tiffany because she's not a spokesperson. Hey, what's going on? And congratulations on taking the next step to joining Home Plus Cleaning. Now, our goal throughout this whole process is to make sure that not only are you a good fit for us, but we're a good fit for you as well. So what we'd like for you to do is use the link down below to schedule an interview with us. And from there, we're going to talk about our company and make sure that we're a good fit for you. So the first part of our hiring process is to tell you all about us and let you make that decision. All right, so schedule with uh, below. Also, here's what some of our team members have to say about us. I'm Tiffany, and I have been with Home Plus Cleaning for about two years now. I joined the team when I was at a point in my life where I was sick of sitting behind a desk all day, and I really wanted to get out and get myself active. So I joined the team, and about two years later, I'm still here. My name is Bill Delaney. I've been with Home Plus Cleaning since February 
The best thing that I like is that once you get your flow, you kind of move your schedule. You can reschedule that a house for three and a half, four hours. But if you've got your flow and you know your house, you could be done in two and a half hours. And now I have time to hit the grocery store before getting the kids. But I'm still making the same money is if I was putting in 40 hours a week, at the end of the week, I'm only putting in like 35 and I'm still getting good check. Over here, got the breakfast set up and everything. Gonna make some breakfast. Gonna make some breakfast. Breakfast, breakfast. breakfast. Okay, so I've almost been here next month for a year and I probably noticed like two weeks ago that I've lost so much weight since I've started working here. I started off probably around 165-ish maybe, and I went down to probably 130. So that was my book. We're looking for rock stars. If you can be the next rock star, you're definitely encouraged to apply, have an interview, all the tools and training you need to be provided. You don't need a lot of cleaning experience. There's a team of rock stars here who are ready to jump in, get you trained so you can start making that commission and start a new adventure in life. You want to work for a company that you are truly appreciated because, you know, you're, most places you're just a number and you can work as hard as you can and you will never get further. You will never, you'll never be told, hey, good job. Um, that's never an issue with this company. You never question how much you're appreciated and where you stand with this company. And if that's what you're looking for, this is the company for you. That is really good. That is really good. Thank you. And that that video was, let me just, I think me going live on my uh, page is ruining this. Can you hear this? Can you hear me good? Yeah, we're good. We're good. Okay. Um, that video Besides me talking in the beginning and Tiffany's intro and speaking, the, that was shot a year ago. And I just never put it together. But the the camera quality, that was my iPhone 6. Um, the mic wasn't the best mic. And the editing, you can even tell because like you can see a little green. But I did it. And even in the beginning, this video that I shot a week ago with me um, speaking, I stuttered. And I'm like, you know what? I don't care. I need to get this on here now. Like time is... Time everything is time sensitive. And if we're not the first ones to do it, somebody else is gonna do it and they're gonna do it and they're gonna beat us to it. <laughs> I'm impressed, ma'am. Those, those are great. Those are really good. I'm yeah. impressed. Yeah, and, and I love it. I'm I'm glad that we looked at that one too. Because you said that Tiffany was so afraid she was um shaking. I couldn't see that shaking no. at all. Did no. you I, go, go ahead? ahead. Uh, yeah, the Talking about uh, weight loss, Leslie. Yeah, yeah. She was worse than Tiffany in terms of being afraid. Literally, that's the only bit that I could get from her entire thing. But that's all you're looking for is that quick little, yeah. you know, 10, 20 second blurb. That's perfect. And I tell them, I'm like, even if you mess up, just keep going through it. I'll do the editing on the back end. And she yeah. was terrified. She was moving like this. You, I, if I show you the raw footage, you'd be like, how'd you even get this piece from that? <laughs> We just got yeah, that, that's great. I'm super glad we we watched that. That's I think that that was the best example of how it, it doesn't have to be perfect to still be good Absolutely. and to be really effective and to do what it's supposed to do. And I almost like it better. Yeah, I, I it feels really real. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay, I I really like that a lot. That was great. So. Um, Paul, do you do you attribute a lot of like what you're doing, your growth and how you're coming out of COVID to, it sounds like you do then, to your website, your SEO work, videos, all this kind of stuff? Yeah, I'd say uh, it, it's not just like, oh, COVID happened and we started doing these things and it kind of fell together. I think it's been kind of like a long-term strategy and building our team and that culture um, to be able to service them because if we didn't have the the great reviews and being able to do this we wouldn't be able to provide we wouldn't be able to get any traction so the the website absolutely helps um but i think it's like the people behind everything that really makes it run together it's just that uh, everything kind of flows and although there are um 
there are deviations in the road sometimes. We don't follow the system to a T all the time, but you know, we adjust and we learn. Yeah, I, I love that. Um, and I do know what you mean about having to adjust and learn, like the 2,500 words per page versus 500 words. Yeah. I'm not looking um, for that one. <laughs> How, how often do you add content or change things or, you know, what do you do there? Yeah, so I, I told myself I was going to do it uh, once a week, add something new, but it's not that consistent. Sometimes things get, um, other things happen. I'd say the last time we had, a, actually we had a content last week, so I take that back. But um, at least every month something's going on the website. Every month something's going on. And it's important to just stay relevant. Uh and that's what it is. You're staying relevant to the search engines. You're telling them, hey, I'm here. I'm a real website and I have new things going on. So don't forget to refer me. It's kind of like that kid in school who keeps putting their hands up and the teacher wants to ignore them. They're like, all right, I choose you. You know, kind of one of those things. You know, and that's not an exact science, you know, but uh, yeah. it's, it's worked for us. Yeah. Uh, so really if, you were working, if you were doing a once a week schedule, is that like writing blog posts or building out city pages or just, you know, taking the existing pages you have and trying to get to that 2,500 words, videos? What, yeah. What's the best way to use your time? So in, in terms of uh, for the SEO aspect, yeah, I'd say the website is going to be key in terms of, so this kind of goes in more into the back end, making sure that your title, the meta tags, those are more like the, um, the techie aspect of it, making sure all the code is right because these search engines want to make sure everything's appropriate. So if you're putting a blog every single week, but your title tag on your website sucks or it's just broken meta tags, and uh, I guess what, here's how I'd sum it up. You, get, you have to clean your house up a little bit first before you start adding new furniture. So that, I guess that's the way I would sum it up. So make sure your website is functioning to a point. And you guys can all um, check it out. I use um, Neil Patel's Uber Suggest. Uber Suggest. And I pay $29 a month. Like If you ever hire me and my team for SEO, we're going to put your name through that. And everybody's like, oh, why are you telling this? We're going to put your website through that exact um, uh, search to get a whole analysis of your, your keywords, your SEO, the way your website's uh, functioning, uh, all of that. And you guys can do that yourself. There's a free aspect, and you can check what your website is doing, any kind of critical errors. And I will tell you this. Every website is always going to have a critical error. Um, it's Nothing's 100% perfect. But speed is a big thing. Make sure your website's loading fast. Um, all these little things. Once your house is clean, then you can add new furniture. That so, means yeah, I love that. Yeah. Paul, I posted your website in the uh, the chat, and if anybody wants to use Neil Patel's tool, I'll go ahead and just drop that there. And too. if you guys want my scripts, by the way, I think I gave it to a whole bunch of people on the QDS page. If you want my scripts for my frequently asked questions, let me know. I have it on Google Drive. Uh, Tom, I can send you the link afterwards and everyone can just kind of go into the scripts. Just remove my name. Make sure you're not saying home plus cleaning. But you got to take that and use it. Well, right? actually, if they did, that might be helpful to you. Right. <laughs> yeah, back yeah. Yeah. Massachusetts, please say home plus cleaning. But, um, we have a resource page on cleaning business today that we add things that we talk about during smart business moves. So if you want to share the link, I'll be glad to post it in our resource Absolutely. page. Absolutely. And then also, Paul, you said if people haven't been having you do some of this work for them, implying that you could, they could maybe get you to do some of this work for them. Yeah, so I actually started a marketing agency. That's my background with marketing. So I started yeah. a marketing agency back in 2018, August Global Marketing for Winners. And uh, I took it as a hobby because I love marketing and I love talking about, you know, what's what the, the principles that stay the same and the principles that are changing. And I wanted to do it as a hobby, so I never took it as a job. I was like, oh, yeah, I'll do a few people if you want me to do this. And um, then it was a little bit before COVID. I kind of started gaining a little bit of traction. And actually, when COVID happened, uh, we started, I'm like, all right, you know what? Let's make this a legitimate business. Let's run it like, uh, like a legitimate business. Let's hire some people in-house and outside, and uh, let's build this. 
Okay, so August Global Marketing for Winners. AugustGlobal.com. Just like my last name. August AugustGlobal.com. Okay. Dot com. All right. So do, can you tell us? I don't know if you can do this because I know SEO is really hard, but can you give us any kind of information around pricing? Like how much does it cost to hire? Like, and I like what you said. Nobody's an SEO expert. <laughs> no, no one is. No one. They all say it. No one's an expert, you know? <laughs> it's a lot yeah. of Yeah. So well, having so, hired many SEO companies, I feel like I can really attest to that fact. <laughs> I mean, marketing in general sometimes is just, I went, oh my goodness. I think I had spent, it was $45,000 over a course of a year and a half um, trying to figure out Google myself. And this was on credit cards, by the way. I was like, uh, swipe, swipe, swipe. <laughs> and I'm like, what the heck? I just thought like I could figure it out. I'm like, oh, well, I took marketing in school. You know, uh, I'll figure it out. Well, that wasn't the case. And then I hired a companies, which I won't mention. And um, although they knew what they were doing a lot of the time with certain things, they didn't understand my industry. And that was a problem working with a company that didn't understand the cleaning industry. And um, one company, they specifically worked with lawyers for PPC, uh, pay-per-click on Google. And I'm like, oh, they work with lawyers. They can definitely do my company. Yeah, it was just dumping money. Not good. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, so, so Leslie's asking, what should we expect to pay for monthly SEO service? Is there a range or? Yeah, so, there is a range and you, you'll find some people on the lower end and some people on the higher end. I'd say anywhere between 600 to 1200 is about the average range, you know, and we kind of fall right in the middle of that. Okay. Yeah. So that, that sounds good. I think that's super, super helpful for people. Before you hire someone for SEO, like I said, make sure your website's already done. There's still a lot of things that you can do yourself to make it a viable thing. You can write, you can say, okay, I'm going to spend uh, one hour every single week and I'm going to create an article or I'm going to write something that my audience wants to read about although most people are not gonna read about it. Uh, what I also recommend is taking those articles. What we're gonna be doing next is taking all of, the, all of the blog articles that we're creating and making them into a video. And we're posting the video on the page and then posting everything in there. It's just for content, it's just content. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I think that makes really good sense too because you hit both, both um, audiences. Some people really love to read and, and some, some people, people really love to watch video. Right. And some people are like me. I want to read, but the video is what makes me want to read it. Yes. So I watch the video and then I'm like, okay, done with that. Now I want to read everything. So, huh. all right. Leslie also wants to know what, what can we expect for that money? You know, because it really is hard for us on this side to know what are we going to get? How do we know that it's worth our money? Absolutely. Uh, and it's one of those things where you have to consistently verify that what's being done is being done. And there's no, for example, if you hire someone for Google AdWords, can you hear me? All right, if you hire someone for Google AdWords, uh, for example, you can go into your history and see how active they are in your account. Oh, there's no change, they haven't done this. Or maybe in a month they created one ad and added two keywords. With SEO, it's very challenging. It's one of those things that I hate to say, you're almost walking by faith to some degree, because if you hire someone that doesn't know what they're doing, you're not finding out in one month, you're not finding out in two months, you're finding out a few months down the road. And that's the challenge there. Um, but what you can expect, what you should expect is that they're building backlinks, that's still a big thing. They're making sure that your website's functioning, that it's fast, that the load times are not um, taking forever. They're creating content. Um, I, I, I can't believe how many people will do SEO, but won't create any content for you. Content's important. Um, so they're creating content. Most. I'm sorry? Most of them. <laughs> yeah, it, it's, a, it's a good amount. And for the amount of work that it takes on some of the other stuff, like you can add in the content. You can add in a video a month, right? Now, this might not be uh, me getting on camera and talking about the industry. It might be a little animated video, um, but something like that, anything, anything that can answer a question, that can satisfy somebody's needs. Like what, what is it that they wanna know? 
Let me answer that. And you can ask your call. If you guys don't have a list of your best customers, at least 10 of them, you know, uh, I recommend doing that. Call them, chat with them, ask them what's going on. And I, I remember um, when we started the company, my wife's role was uh, the home advisor. This is before I knew home advisor was a thing, by the way. <laughs> I told her, your job is to become best friends with the clients. And to, to a certain degree, in terms of, I want to know, and I, I tell our team members this too, I want to know uh, when their kids are graduating. I want to know any serious uh, life events. I want to know uh, what's going on, especially with our top clients. They all know that, like, when they go in that client's house, uh, you know, if, if, if there's a loss in the family, a, a dog passed away, they got a new dog, you know, we know these things, we're sending things out. So these customers, they get comfortable with you and you are their friend. They're going into their home and they're willing to give you information because one, they want to contribute because they feel like they, they have an invested interest in your company. And mm -hmm. the other part of that is like, it, it makes it better for them as well. Well, what do you say about I have another question getting back to the SEO and the backlinks because that's always a topic of discussion. It seems to me it doesn't matter what SEO, you know, consultant you're talking to, getting more backlinks is always, you know, part of it. They talk about the on site and the off site, you know, uh, SEO. What's a backlink campaign look like? I mean, how many backlinks should, should I be adding to my website each week? All of them. I'm sorry. I said all of them. No, so uh, back in the days, you could just go, to, you pay like uh, someone a couple hundred bucks, and they'll get you all these backlinks. And next thing you know, you have like a thousand backlinks on your page. Yeah, well, there's I guess there's blog sites and all kinds of things that are kind of I don't know black hat kind of stuff. Well, those websites are getting penalized. Like you, you can't do that anymore. <laughs> You can't just go out there and say, I'm going to pay someone and get a whole bunch of backlinks because Google's realizing like they caught up and I keep using Google because it's just the biggest search engine. And um, whatever happens on Google, the other ones follow. I'm sorry, I got to move you guys out of the sun. But um, they kind of started figuring out, OK, this is happening. And these websites are getting ranked because they're doing it, not because they're necessarily a good website. And just for you guys that don't know what a uh, backlink is, think about it as a, uh, a review or a referral. It's another website saying like, hey, this website's credible. You should check it out. And, that, and that's pretty much that. Um, I'd say, th you know, somebody might say, Paul, you don't know that because you don't know how that algorithm works. And to be honest, like there's, there's really no, I, I don't have the ends with Google to, to tell you what it should be. But I mean, I wouldn't be putting less than 10 backlinks a week, a, a month on my website. Okay. Like, that, that's actually helpful. Change. They just had it. So everything is rapidly changing. That's why you have to be on the cutting edge and test things. Like, okay, I was doing this this month and it was working for the whole time. All of a sudden there's an algorithm change and I'm still doing this, but now we're not ranking anymore. We're actually getting penalized. So let's switch it up. That's what you have to do. It has to be constant and it's, it's almost a full-time job to make sure that you're you're ahead of them. So they're not just giving out this information. Here you go, here's the Bible on what to do. Yeah. So Leslie has a question here. She wants to know if it's reasonable to ask for a list of what they've done for the month with their invoice, like how much time they've spent Ooh, or absolutely. whatever. It was very reasonable. That was very and reasonable. So, so to, to piggyback off of what she's asking here, Paul, like what, what should we, Request from them. Should we just ask them how much time they spent, or we should should we ask them what backlinks? What did you do? What what's the actual thing we should be asking for? A good question. So the time itself is not necessarily like okay, hey, you spent an hour versus you know twenty hours. It's not one of those things. It's um, what's getting done. You know, where are if I'm targeting Boston house cleaning, that's my keyword. Where was it last week? Where is it now? Where is it last? I mean, I'm sorry. Where was it last month? Where is it now? What have you done to get it to where it's at? You know, what content have you built around that keyword to get it ranked? And some keywords are easier to get than others. Um, Boston is a very challenging one. It's just a competitive area, so yeah. we're fighting to kind of get those lower so hanging fruit. So you take some of the, let's say, for example, you're in a big metro area, you and you target the outside areas focus on those for the SEO purposes. And as those gain credibility, the other one will start gaining cred credibility as well once you start targeting that. 
So versus I'm going to spend all my money. I'm going to tell you, hey, take $1,200 a month. Just get me first on Boston. Well, that's going to take a long, long time. And we're not talking 90 days, you know, or half a year. We're talking, talking a long time. And just because you're there this month doesn't mean you're not going to get knocked off the next month. Yeah. It's one of those things that you have to do. But unfortunately, it's like it's not a set it and forget it. It's sure. not. Yeah. Yeah, I guess there's only, you know, 10 natural search slots on the first page. And yeah. Everybody's fighting for them. Exactly. Yeah. So, uh, so would this question be a good question? So I'm going back to my, my thing then. Because it's really hard if you don't know about SEO and if I don't want to spend, would you say $50,000, $40,000 learning how to do it? I don't want to spend that. Yeah. Then is it, would a good question I mean, be? I mean, it, by the way. What? That money didn't help me either. I had oh. to take it worse. <laughs> that's even worse. Oh, <laughs> yeah, actually, I spent more money after that. I took it. <laughs> a- <laughs> oh, yeah, that's even worse. Okay. So if I don't want to do that, I want to hire somebody. Um, it, would this be the thing to say, yes, I want to hire you, but I need a monthly accounting of what you did for me? You should get that anyways. Absolutely. You should get a report. Um, I think anyone that's doing any kind of marketing for you, should be giving you reports to see, okay, what directly is going into it and what's coming out? And does this still justify it? And I think that's across the board, whether it's Facebook marketing, Google, somebody's doing YouTube for you or um, SEO. You should always get a report. And I mean, it's just good business practices, right? Good business practice. You want to know your sales at the end of the month, you know, and uh, it's the same thing with marketing. You want to know that and how they all play in together. And one thing I, I will say too is um, the hard part with like, getting somebody that is not proven, that's just like a new guy. Maybe he actually knows um, what he's doing, or a new girl, they know what they're doing. The hard part is knowing that their results are going to be what they say it is before it's too late. So, what I would say is um, if you're looking at uh, a company, just you can look at the reviews, that's good. But if you can ask them, and some won't do it, some will do it. Say, hey, who do you have in my industry that you've worked with that can vouch for you? You know, that, that's, it's so simple, but um, some people will be like, oh, my clients, confidentiality. But I think that's a good stepping stone. Now, whether the other person on the other line is gonna tell you the truth or not, because you might be a competitor or whatever the reason is, is a whole different story. But try to get someone that's done it, like, hey, um, I've worked with so-and-so before they got good results for me and let's do it. You know? and, and quite honestly, you know, we've heard those stories too, where I've worked with a particular SEO person and it was really well, good. And I got a lot of benefit until they became popular and then they took on a whole bunch of clients and then it wasn't as good anymore. That's exactly what it is. That's exactly what it is. They're spending less time on the account and yeah, and unfortunately that's just, that's exactly what happens over time. I mean, it's like cleaning. If we start uh, just not worrying about our clients and diluting it, uh, you know, any industry that can happen. So yeah. it's up to the owner to make sure that they're accountable for what they're doing. Yeah, of course that makes sense too. All right. So Leslie says, so for her guy, she creates all the content because nobody does content that she likes. Mm-hmm. Should it be less expensive for her since they're working together or, and he is okay with the arrangement or, should she expect to spend about the same amount of money? Yeah, if, if you're creating less. Yeah, right. I, again, not, not every SEO person is going to go out there and create content for you. Uh, they're just going to say, oh, yeah, we're, we're building, the, we're targeting these keywords and we're doing uh, backlink building and all that. I think content is really where it's at. Um, maybe some people will argue with me, but I think content is equally, if not more important than uh, backlinks. Because you can have the backlinks, but if your website is just, it's not juicy for the uh, for the search engines, then they don't really care about it that much. I, I do have a real quick question too. So, are you doing anything special with content during you know this COVID period? Are you changing it up? Are you uh, directly addressing it on your website? And and is that working? Not working? Yeah. So. Um, I, I have to say this, and I got to be completely transparent. I wasn't as aggressive as going for the COVID, uh, like everything that's going on COVID, as 
I probably should have been, uh, or that some other people are, mainly because, um, so I, I did a hazmat cleaning, like that was, that was my job in the military, hazmat, uh, things of that nature. And I knew, first of all, no one knows anything about this. Like I have a good friend of mine, he's a surgeon, and he's like, you don't know, no one knows. So there was that aspect. I don't know what I'm putting my team members into. Um, the other aspect was, we don't have the PPE. So if we don't have the proper gear to go in there, how can I target that? Um, as far as addressing it, we didn't address it on our website. Um, uh, although if you actually go to my website, you'll see COVID cleaning. Uh, we actually put that on originally. And then I'm like, wait, 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 we're getting way over our heads. So we didn't do that. Um, but what we did was we contacted customers and actually a lot of our customers got a personal phone call when we see like, okay, a lot of people are jumping ship, let's see how we can uh, address them and kind of put them their mind at ease. Um, we started, we gave them the option of, um, of prepaying for their cleaning or donating their cleaning. Um, actually, a lot of our customers, uh, uh, our, our bank account grew bigger while we were in COVID. It was the, it was the strangest thing. And I'm like, what's going on here? Well, we weren't spending on certain things and customers wanted to contribute. They wanted to see that team members get paid and um, they were able to donate some to the police department. And um, one thing that we were able to do too, because of our customers, I actually just posted this yesterday, we were able to, we had pushed back our insurance. May 2020, we were supposed to have health insurance, but we had pushed it back. I didn't know what was going on. I didn't know what steps we were gonna have to take. And I said, everything has to be lean and mean. But um, we, we were able to, um, restart our insurance program with uh health and dent i mean with uh vision and dental as well and that's all because of our customers and we reached out to them and let them know hey you were able to do this you know and uh our, our customers were so ecstatic about that well we are pushing right up against the hour and i gotta say since we've been doing these facebook lives during this unprecedented event almost missed it uh <laughs> This is this has been one of the most useful uh, Facebook lives we've done, Paul. Truly, this is a lot of awesome information. And um, you know, I don't know what you typically do at five o'clock. You know, most afternoons, but you know, you could uh, you could become a regular here because this is uh, this is good. Thank you very much, um, Liz. Uh, Liz, you're. Uh, Thank you. We do have to ask this one question though, real quick. Um, Leslie wants to know if you offer website appraisals to see if they need to make a switch or what they might need to do. Absolutely. So in terms of like uh, redesigning a whole website? Uh, I'm, I'm guessing she wants you to just look at her website and see, does she well, need more SEO, a different SEO? Website appraisal. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So um, Leslie, what you can do is um, you can actually drop me a message at Paul August official. That's my Facebook page. Drop me a message with your your website um, URL. <laughs> I'll run a analysis for you and I'll send it to you. And if I think that, uh, first of all, I see some websites out there that are incredible and people are like, oh, I want to change it, Paul. I'm like, yeah, I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to do a better job than that. It's pretty good, <laughs> you know? Um, but I think it needs to be changed. Um, I'll go ahead and I'll send you a mock-up if you're interested in it, or how it would look like if we design your website. I uh, dropped the link to uh, augustglobal.com too. I'm assuming they can reach you through that. Yes. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Uh, there was a question that you wanted us to answer, Liz, about uh, what your practice should be if you have a client that tests COVID positive. You're so good, Tom. I'm so glad. Linda, I'm so sorry. I almost let that slide by. We got Tom here. Yeah, yeah. okay, well, we're, 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 we're good. Um, you know, early information, you know, led us to believe, and I, I guess we're, we're still working from a lot of this, that people are most contagious even before they're symptomatic and then in the early stages. Um, a lot of companies, our company, and a lot of other people I work with, they have a policy in place that they stay out of the home until two weeks, you know, Whenever they become non-symptomatic, we wait an additional two weeks and then we would resume service. Um, I haven't seen anything contradicting that. So we're presumed that, you know, that's still still good practice. 
Yeah, see, Linda is very grateful that you remembered her. Yeah, we're doing the same thing, Linda. I think most people are still doing that too. I think that's uh, a good Norma, Yes. So Norma, everybody, I think that Paul meant that if you guys put your information on there, he'll get to as many as he can, not yeah. just Leslie. Yes. You might not do everybody, <laughs> but right. he'll get to as many as he can. So be fast. Get on there quick, Norma. Well, then he'll be like one of those people that had so many clients that he isn't really... <laughs> Page website, like what is this, Paul? <laughs> I, 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 not in a cocky way, I guess, because um, I said this one time to somebody, and they're like, "That's pretty arrogant." But I'm happy about the clients. I'm more happy about the clients that I turn away than the ones that I say yes to, because I just think it just keeps it better. And I don't build my life around my business. I, I build my business around my life. So if I won't be able to go flying and have some fun, I won't take on the job. <laughs> that's, for right, the that's nice. That's a good saying. I like it. Yeah. Also, so I just, I got to tell you that you are one of the least arrogant people I have personally ever met. So whoever said that, yeah, no, <laughs> wrong. <laughs> this is cool. And really oh, I, I, you know, I've gotten to know you a whole lot better over this last hour, and I'm I'm excited about uh, continuing the discussion. Um, we are right uh, against the wall here, though. Liz, who are we going to have tomorrow? You can't see. So tomorrow, tomorrow we're having Carrie Knight, and uh, Carrie is uh, awesome. For those of you that don't know her. Um, check, pull her up on Facebook because we're out of time. I can't tell you too much about her, but pull her up on Facebook and just see what she's about. She's she's an amazing person too. You're gonna love having her on the call tomorrow. Yeah. Thing about Carrie is she keeps it real. She'll tell you she'll tell you all the good, the bad, and the ugly. And Friday is on the spot. It's a rapid fire Q and A where uh, Liz and I and our special guest each get one minute to answer your questions. Uh, we did it uh, last week for the first time. Paul Freed joined us, and we had a lot of fun. Um, yeah. any, do you have a hint as to who our special guest is? So I, I do have a, a hint for um, our special guest. So she is one of my favorite people. There, <laughs> there you go. That's it. That, that's mine, my hint. Mine, mine as well. Mine as well. <laughs> Now they know it's a she. They didn't she know that is. yesterday. One of my yeah. favorite people. She yes. is awesome. <laughs> she is. Okay, guys. Right. Thank yeah. you so much. Uh, Thank you so much, Paul. Rest of your day. We'll see you here tomorrow at uh, 5 o'clock Eastern. Bye-bye. Guys, have a good night. Thanks. You too, Paul. Thanks again.